And today we're going to compare and contrast ancient Egyptian sports with modern sports. We're doing this in an informative way. An informative text is like a report or an article. There's lots of facts, and the author writes all these facts with hardly any emotion because the author wants you to know something. In this case, we're talking about the structure of compare and contrast. There's lots of different structures we could use, but today we're specifically looking at compare and contrast. To compare and contrast, you have to have two things. You've got to describe them. In one part, you're going to say how they're the same, and then in another part, you're going to say how they're different. So now that you have watched those videos and read those articles, you're going to have lots of notes for this. We're going to turn those notes into paragraphs. So the first thing you got to do is you got to think of the two things you're going to talk about. And the easiest way to do that is to make three columns. One column about ancient times, one column about what they have in the same, and then the last column about the modern version of it. So some people like to use a Venn diagram for this, but I don't have enough room to write in a Venn diagram, so I kind of like to use columns. So basically, one thing in one column, the other thing in the other column, and what they have the same in the middle. So now me, I'm a hockey girl, so I'm going to start off with hockey, and I'm going to say, hockey has, and I'm going to list the things that hockey has in ancient Egypt. And then I'm going to kind of look up what hockey has in the modern world, because hockey has a puck, and did they have a puck back then? And then after I've listed the things that the ancients did and the things that the modern people do, then I can list the things in the middle that they both have the same. And then I'm just going to repeat that with the next sport. So what is if you're talking about the high jump or you're talking about tug of war, whatever the second sport is, you're going to do the same thing in those columns. And then you're ready to start writing. So the introductory paragraph is going to describe the two different versions. Then the second paragraph is going to say how they're both the same. And the third paragraph is going to say how they're both different, and then the conclusion was going to parallel the introduction. And that right there is basically what your informative text is going to look like. So let's just start with the introductory paragraph. The introductory paragraph is going to describe the two different things you're talking about. You need to hook your reader in to make them interested in reading it. Then you're going to have a general statement that leads to your topic statement. Then you're going to summarize the format of your paragraphs. That's basically how every introduction works, so the reader knows what to expect in your writing and can follow your flow of thought. So here's an example of an introductory paragraph talking about hockey. Read this paragraph to yourself. Okay, maybe you don't like that one. Here's another example of an introductory paragraph, and tell me if you like this one a little better. Read this one to yourself and tell me if it's better. Okay, here's another example, and tell me if you like this one a little better. So you write your own introduction, or you can use one of mine as a model to see, but then once you have the introduction done, now you need to say how they're both the same in a paragraph. I'm not going to model one for you, but I'm going to show you the format. So the format of how they're both the same looks like this. First, let me tell you how the two versions are the same. That's kind of like your transition sentence. Then give one sentence of one way that they are the same. Maybe you're going to talk about the equipment. Or maybe you're going to talk about the rules, or maybe you're going to talk about the playing field. Tell me one thing on how they're the same. Then give one sentence what you think about that. Then give another sentence about another way that they're the same. And then give another sentence about what you think about that. So far, you would have listed two ways that they're the same. If you want to, you can take a quote from the article or a quote from the video and then throw that in and make your paragraph even longer. Once you tell a quote, though, you have to give another sentence on how that quote is relevant. You can't just shove a quote in there. You have to say, this is relevant because, or something like that. So I'm going to leave the screen up just like this so you can pause the video and then write your paragraph from here. So go ahead and click pause and do all these things. 
So right now, you should have about seven sentences in your first paragraph and two ways that they're the same. So then your third paragraph is now gonna say how they're different. So you need a transition sentence to begin with that sounds like this. Next, let me tell you how the two versions are different. And then now you're gonna do, follow the same kind of format. You're gonna give one sentence how they're different and then give a sentence of what you think about that. And then give another way that they're different and then give another sentence about that. If you wanna, again, put in a quote, then once you use the quote, you have to say how it's irrelevant. So maybe you're gonna say something like, um, in tug of war, the rope was different. Or you can say, in tug of war, the amount of people was different. You know, or the rules were different. There's lots of different ways that it could be different. And then finally, So I'm gonna leave the screen up just like this so you can pause the video and then write your paragraph from here. So go ahead and click pause and do all these things. And then finally you throw on your introduction and your conclusion. And the introduction and the conclusion paragraph parallel each other. That means they are very, very similar. The introduction tells the reader what you're going to say and then it orients them to get ready to take in the new information. And the conclusion tells the readers what you just said reminds them of the main points, and then lets them go with a mic drop. So the general format of this introduction and conclusion is you gotta hook the reader, you gotta have a general statement, a topic statement, and a paragraph summary. But in the conclusion, we kinda flip those the other way, remember? And then instead of hooking your reader, you're gonna let them off the hook. So you're gonna take the introduction and parallel it in the conclusion. So a conclusion can sound like this. In conclusion, this essay compared and contrasted the sport of, and you write whatever sport you did. Sports are universal to the ex human experience, despite what year it is. You think your YouTube Fortnite pandemic world is so unique. The truth is, you have much more in common with the ancient Egyptians than you think. So I summarized the paragraphs. I compared and contrasted. I have a topic statement, the sport I said. I have a general statement about your world, and then I drop the mic. Okay, so maybe you think that one is not so good. Read this one to yourself and tell me if this one's better. And then you can add your own part here. The thing to remember is we are all the same. Okay, the thing to remember is we have a lot more in common with ancient people than you think. Or you can have anything for the thing to remember is like that's your mic drop so however you want to conclude that's up to you but what you needed to get from this video is that when you compare and contrast two things one paragraph compares them the next paragraph contrasts them and then you throw on an introduction you throw on a conclusion and you're done but overall you gotta make it interesting Okay, so start your writing on your own. Use examples from this video if you need a little help getting started, but get it done.